my friends and brothers in the green industry, I come to you with a heavy heart um, to share some unfortunate news. My my dog passed away, but there's more. Um, I know this is not popular to talk about. And this might hurt my YouTube channel algorithm. But this is uh, helpful for me to share uh, because I believe if I if I don't, you'll see me upset in uh, future videos, and <laughs> and I don't want you to wonder why. So I just want to get it all out now and get it done with. Uh, if you know the Kelphises and you've ever met us in person, it's almost kind of weird because <laughs> we bring our dogs with us everywhere. And it's not Miko. Our old dog Miko is actually fine. If you know us, uh, our little dog Gino had a, a stage four heart murmur and uh, the tricuspid valve in his heart was deformed. So it was constantly pushing. And it, even when the veterinarians, we took him to like expensive dog doctors and they're like, this is not good. And we knew it. But he was so happy and playful. But this dog and I bonded and imprinted on each other, and he was my soulmate. And I would take him for all the dogs for a walk, and then I would take him for another walk, a night walk. And then I would I've been riding my bike at night, getting great cardio, looking at the stars, and he would cry. So I got a little basket. I put it on the front of the bike. <laughs> he would come with me. It had a little thing you zipped around him, and he uh, he loved it. I said, you want to go for a bicycle ride with daddy? <laughs> and he'd cry every night. I never, ever took this dog for granted. And um, I mean, I, I was glued to him. I wouldn't even move my car out of my truck out of the driveway and back in. Uh, a lot of times we'd go for a little mini car ride and he would jump from the center console up on my shoulders. If you ever see me post on Instagram and look out the window face to face just to go for a little 90 second car ride. He came with us everywhere. He's been all over the country with us. He was a three and a half year old party Yorkie that was going to be euthanized at birth in his litter because these breeders overbred the dogs, which is evil. And they were gonna euthanize him because he wasn't sellable because he had a heart defect, right? It's like almost like a defective product, right? My wife is the most, um, Sorry, I got to compose myself. My honor and gratitude first well, actually goes to God. <sighs> because when you don't think that you have any room for anything else in your life and you're up to your eyeballs, <laughs> there's always room for love more. And my wife, December, uh, January of 2021, a freezing, boring winter, she comes home with this little puppy. We have a lot of pets. We already had two dogs and three cats because my wife, her dream is to own a, uh, start an animal rescue, right? And I was like, oh, we got to grow these businesses. And we got to, but I love and respect and I honor my wife because we wouldn't have our pets that we have now if it wasn't for her. My wife is, her capacity for love is beyond any human I've ever known. She's, um, it's unbelievable. So she brings home this little white Yorkie. Yorkies are copper colored, right? And he's tiny and he has little spots. He's a party Yorkie. So it's a different type of breed. As soon as I hold this little dog, he's sleeping. I can instantly feel the energy. I'm like, whoa, this dog is insane. It's going to be rambunctious. We were supposed to find it a home. We we're just homing it for a few days. I'll make this quick. And we had this little playpen with blankets and toys and for him and very well taken care of and right next to our bed because our dogs sleep in our bed and we didn't want to get attached to him because we had too many animals right and so it was nighttime and we went to bed and he was crying in the playpen and jumping up trying to and my wife's like we can't we can't and i'm like no no we can't so the second night just while sleeping, checking on him multiple times. Very, we, we spoil our dogs, trust me, like over the top. But he was crying. She says, okay, we'll bring you in the bed he buy. She brings this little doggy in between us in the bed, and he snuggles up in the blankets. Game over. 
next thing you know, this little Gino, we called him. I'm dancing around the house going, genie, beanie, boy, genie, beanie, boy, genie, beanie, boy, genie, beanie, boy. And I'll go faster and faster. And he's, rawr, 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 and he's, he's biting my slipper and I'm dragging him around the house. And we became inseparable. And this dog pissed all over our house constantly. He, my, my wife lost her mind of how much he would not potty train. He pissed on everything. Um, our dogs were annoyed by him. He was so hyper. He was, dude, our old dog, Miko. If you're still watching this, I want you to put in the comments the word. <laughs> love. Put the word love in the comments. So our old dog, Miko, is very old. And he's got a health issue as well. But Gino, this little puppy, would run and leap through the air, the air with his ears flying and bite at Miko just playing and it drove our dogs nuts because this dog was all over the place but then he grew on our dogs and they began to love him he brought so much he, he turned our house into a, a party right um so anyways he was having little heart attacks in the backyard he was not allowed to chase squirrels in the backyard because he would literally um fall over and have a heart attack and I have to pick him up and like he would come back and like be shaking and limping and then he would shake it off and he'd be okay because his heart couldn't handle the the speed and so I had to condition myself like to be very careful but anyways we could not stop him from being hyper from being playing the the cardiologist gave us three to five years and for the last like six months it's been a miracle um He's, he hasn't had any actual episodes where he's collapsed from the heart murmur because it's not working properly. And um, we, we feed them, dude, I have a 10-stage water filtration system that I, 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 I remineralize the water with the colloidal minerals and I balance it with sea salts and they have a water filter system. And like I give them, I have a, a dog vitamins and I make them fresh chicken with brown rice and like all types of stuff. Like I, I, I'm obsessed with being the best dog dad that I can be. And I'm hyper conscious about being completely empathetic. So like I look in my dog's eyes and I say, I love you. I love you so much. Like with complete connection. It's not just like, oh, it's just a dog. No, no, no. This is like my son. You know what I mean? Like that's how much I, I love my dog and I love animals, right? So. Um, here's how he died. Last night at 10.26 p.m. 10.20, I mean 9.25 p.m. We got a little dog door. He runs in and out, in and out, in and out, 150 times a day, barking, barking out the window nonstop. He's crazy. And he's he's been really fine. He's sleeping at my feet by the couch. He's on me. I'm petting him. He's sleeping on my feet. He's barking. He's all over the place. We're giving him treats. I'm petting him. I'm playing with him. Just like any normal night, some uh, neighbors are walking their dogs past, and our two little dogs always bark. So he barked out the front window, and then he ran out the back door to go to the backyard gate to get a glimpse so he could bark at them. And my wife and I were just chilling like a normal night. And then I hear screaming outside, two of them. First scream was a painful scream, and the second scream was like a help me scream. And they were like back to back, and I was like, What's that? And I got, I jumped up and I went out to the back door and I'm looking around, Gino, 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 where are you, Gino? And I'm clapping my hands and I instantly knew something was wrong. So I'm, I'm looking around, it's dark, and right in the bushes, his body's laying lifeless. Uh, I looked at my ring cameras, it was, it, this seems like a long time. It took me somewhere between 23 and 27 seconds from the moment he barked, uh, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I had to be in faster than that. That seems way too long. I feel I feel guilty at that long. Like you're processing what's happening. It's coming all the way from outside. We have other dogs that bark. We have neighbors that play with their dogs. Like so it's just it's loud. But as soon as 
I heard it. I jumped up and I ran out and I'm trying to find him in the dark. I found him laying there. Boom. I instantly grabbed him and, and, and I'm, I'm patting him. I lay him down. I'm giving him CPR, chest compressions, mouth to mouth, chest compressions, mouth to mouth, chest compressions, mouth to mouth. I yell to my wife. She comes out. We're laying on the patio with our dog. And um, this is really helping me. This is very therapeutic. And th when I found him, there was no heartbeat, no pulse, no breathing. And so as I'm doing chest compressions, his heart wouldn't even start. Like, it's almost like it was, he had a massive heart attack and it was, it was done. Like his heart failed completely and gave up. Like, like, like almost take like a little motor that has half a million miles on it and you're running at red line constantly. And one day it just seizes up. Right. And I'm praying to the Holy Spirit, like Jesus, Lord, you raised, you raised Lazarus from the dead. You did this, you did in total faith, praying nonstop. And um, I keep doing chest compressions, giving him mouth to mouth, no response at all. And, and I saw when I first picked him up and his eyes were focused. So even though he wasn't breathing and there was no heartbeat, what I saw was he was still alive. And within, I'd say 25, 30 seconds, so make that about a minute from the initial heart attack, he, he, well, he was already completely limp and lifeless, but his tongue now came out. There was nothing there, and and I just kept praying, and I kept doing it. And so my wife's like, we got to get him to an emergency vet. And so I'm like, I can't stop doing this. I can't stop. Like, I can't just stop, and we bring a lifeless dog to the vet. We can. We we're, we're, we, we tried. But what I mean is I kept nonstop giving him chest compressions, and then I got him up all the way, and she's in my truck. She's sobbing and crying. We're, we get out onto the main road, and I'm just in the truck now giving a – that he, after I'd say, if I could best guess, right at about the three to four minute mark, I saw that the dog was lifeless and it let go and it was completely gone. Like, and I, and now I'm, because I promised I would not give up. Right, I'm, I'm praying. I'm giving him mouth to mouth. My phone dies in the truck because it was already dead. Her phone died. We got two dead phones. No emergency vets or anything's open. It doesn't matter anyways because he's already gone, but we're just doing the right thing. Right? So we pulled over in a closed vet hospital. It was completely closed and everything was locked up. And uh, his bowels let go while we were driving. And I had, I mean, I got to go clean my truck. I mean, literally dog mess all over my head. I didn't even care. I didn't care that I was giving him mouth to mouth. I didn't care that... His, his, I, I love my dog, right? I would do anything. And I was careful when I was holding a snout, like puffs, and I could feel the lungs expand and air, chest, 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 expand. And when I was doing it after like the two minute mark, it was, um, it was just like, like a, almost like a whoopee cushion, like the death gargle. It was just, I was just, blowing up a lifeless dog if this makes sense and my wife was like no 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 because it, it's like it happened so sudden and un unexpectedly so we pulled over in this vet place and I was like I, you just park the truck I have to wash my hands and I'm I didn't have time to cry but then I I knew it was final and I started sobbing and bawling and rinsing my mouth out with water and my face and sanitizer and cleaning and we, I put him on my my center council blanket and brought him home and uh we put the blanket with our dog in a dog bed and put him up and we let all our other animals view him as we laid around crying and bawling and sobbing till 3 30 in the morning our other dogs understand that he's gone they totally get it um, our little dog, Gracie, who is best friends with him, uh, she's very, 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 very hurt. And so I went around my yard. We have a beautiful garden. And I cut uh, hydrangea stems. I cut lavender. I cut wygelia. I cut fountain grass. I cut lily. And I made a beautiful bouquet. And as I was cutting it and making a bouquet out of my own garden for him where he played, I was sobbing, crying, 
completely heartbroken because it had never occurred to me to take scissors and go cut trimmings from my own garden. And um, I laid them out like a viewing and I put a Bible on them. This was all very slow. I just like, and I said my, to my wife, you have to come see these beautiful bouquet I made for him. She's like, if you want me to. And because she was already, oh, she had already sobbed now for two and a half hours straight, right? She comes into the garage and I got him laid out. As soon as she saw it, she just started sobbing. So it's the next morning now. Uh, we've been on no sleep. I've slept two and a half hours. We've just spent the last two hours basically doing a viewing, a funeral with our dog. This is way too much information and it's pretty morbid, so I should probably just stop. But we did the most beautiful thing. I read Bible verses and we're going to, um, it's very hard to let go. This has happened very fast. And, um, he's my little Gino Beanie Beanie boy. He's the best dog I ever had in my entire life. I'm in love with him and he's the most beautiful, um, not a hurtful bone in his body. Phenomenal dog. Everywhere we went, he rode. He jumped from the center console and ride up on my shoulders. I, I, I carried him. I mean, complete love. Every day I get home, I lay on the kitchen floor. And I go, oh, my God, Daddy's home, Daddy's home. And the dogs jump all over me, and I'm, I'm hugging them and kissing them. And I carry him around the house. I pick him up. I flip him over on his back and put him on the couch and <laughs> like that. And then I run down in the basement, and he's chasing me. And he's, I mean, I'm talking like the constant love and connection. I literally couldn't even use the bathroom without the dog sitting next to my feet, and I'd be petting him. Complete nonstop love. So. With all that being said, thank you for listening. Um, I have to now say goodbye to my beautiful three-and-a-half-year-old party Yorkie, Gino. And I do it with much um, sadness. I have no regrets. And I give all honor and glory to the Father, our Father God in heaven. And I also give much honor and praise and love and respect to my dear wife, who... Without her, I would have never even met this dog because she has a heart of gold and she is the most loving uh, human being I've ever known. And I am a very blessed man. And um, it is the circle of life and death is very real. And, um, <sighs> okay. All right, I got all that out and I'm not going to be blubbering about it and, uh, videos again and uh for all you guys i appreciate you i have much love and honor and gratitude and respect for you and there are some very very wise men and women who follow there are women too in the green industry <laughs> uh, very smart intelligent people who follow and watch my videos and i see you and i see your comments and i much honor and respect you and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And have a good day. Later.